Welcome everyone. Welcome brothers and sisters. Thank you once again for joining us in our Sunday service. So uh, if you have your Bible with you, uh, if you're ready, let's all bow our heads and close our, high, uh, close our eyes. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this beautiful day that you've given us, Lord, and uh, forgive us from all our unrighteousness. Wash us with your holy, precious blood, and once again, use me as your mouthpiece, Lord. Use me as your, your instrument, Lord, pertaining your message. Thank you, Lord, and uh, we cast out any hindrances in the powerful name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray for whoever is watching right now to touch their hearts and their minds, Lord, and help them give them the understanding, Lord, so they can grasp your words. Any hindrances we cast out in the powerful name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so if you're ready, brothers and sisters, I am ready as well. If you have your Bible with you, or um, also you can just uh, refer to our TV screens here. So uh, let me take you to the book of Matthew, chapter 24. Now, this is an amplified version. Now, the Bible said Jesus left the temple area and was going on his way with his disciples. So they were, they were walking. And his disciples came up to him to call his attention to the magnificent and massive buildings of the temple. So meaning, Jesus and his disciples were walking. And then all of a sudden, they passed by with, with these massive buildings of the temple. So they called Jesus' attention. They said, look, Jesus, look at the massive buildings of this temple. In verse 2, and Jesus responded, and he said to them, do you see all these things? He said, do you see all these buildings that you showed me? Assure you, I assure you, and most solemnly, say to you, not one stone here will be left on another, which will not be torn down. Now, in easy to read version, the Bible said, he asked them, are you looking at these buildings? The fact is, they will be destroyed, Jesus said. Now, brothers and sisters, have you been to a country, to a tourist spots, where you are um, so amazed with all the buildings? Now the Bible said, if you see all these buildings, all these massive buildings or temples, the fact is, Jesus said, they will be destroyed, meaning there, you won't see a single building stand they will all break down or destroy. Every stone will be thrown down to the ground. Not one stone will be left on another. So meaning, there will be a massive destruction because the Bible said, not one stone here will be left on another and then they continued walking without giving any specifics. Now, as you can see, when Jesus said, so you're showing me all these buildings, and Jesus said, everything will be destroyed. And without any specification, or not specification, but any specifics, he didn't say how, why, when, and then they continue walking. And then verse 3, the Bible said, now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciple came to him privately, saying, Tell us when will these things be, Lord? And what will be the sign of your coming? Now, if you notice this, when Jesus said, You see all these buildings, all these buildings will be destroyed. They already knew what Jesus was trying to say, but they don't know when. And they don't know why and how. No, and what will be the sign of your coming? They knew, and of the end of the age. Now, when Jesus said, "You will, all these buildings will be destroyed," they keep their tongue tied. They didn't ask question, but they, but it's actually at the back of their mind. Now, when they reach Mount Olive, 
they, can no, they can no longer control themselves. So that's why they asked Jesus privately and they said, Jesus, when will this thing be? When? Now, then Jesus started to explain to them further the signs before it happened. Now, before we go there, before we continue reading, let me give you an example of a mother giving birth to her child. Now, if a mother giving birth to her child, there are signs, right? There are symptoms. The child will not, will not come out right away. There are symptoms and signs. Just to give you an idea, there is what we call early signs of labor. Uh, giving birth will, will be different from every woman, but the main sign that you are starting labor will most likely be strong, regular contraction and a show during your pregnancy. It says here, other sign that you are going into labor can include. Now, this is the early signs. Now, your water breaking, back aches. I'm just giving you a summary or an ups upset stomach, cramping or tightening, a feeling of pressure, an urge to go to the toilet because of your baby's head is pressing. Now, this is just the early signs. Now, there is the actual stage of labor, there are three stages. So meaning there are symptoms and signs, brothers and sisters. And this is what the apostles are trying to know from Jesus. Because they want to know. They want to be what? They want to be ready. They want to know. Now, let's continue reading. In verse 4, and, then the, and Jesus responded. And Jesus said, and Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed. Now, these are the list. These are the list. These are the signs now, the early signs of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus said, number one, take heed that no one deceives you. Take heed. This is a warning. Number two, for many will come in my name saying, I am, saying I am the Christ and will deceive men. What is this? Meaning there is false Christ. Let's continue. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. This is the early signs. What else? See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass. And the end is what? Will come? No. The Bible said the end is not yet. So meaning Jesus is again telling us ahead of time what will happen in the future before the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, see that you are not troubled. Christians, Jesus is saying, see that you're not troubled. Why? For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now, let's continue. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, an earthquake in various places. Now remember, this is the early signs. The Bible said famines, pestilences, and earthquake in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So there is what? The beginning. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. This is what Jesus is telling his apostle. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations. For my name's sake, Christians, you will be persecuted because of his name's sake. It's, it's not like you did something wrong, but because you carried the name of Jesus, you will be persecuted. This is what the Bible says. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Let's continue. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound. Why? One of the reasons why it's because of what? Famine. That's one of the reasons why there will be what? The, it will, the lawlessness will abound, the Bible said. The love of many will grow cold. Next verse. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. He who endures. Listen, brothers, brethren, listen, my brothers and sisters. The Bible says, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. It's not how you start, but how you finish your race. Jesus said, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached 
in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. Now, brothers and sisters, pay attention to these two words, the gospel and the word witness. You see, brothers and sisters, God uses people for people. You won't, you won't hear the audible voice of the Lord right now, like you will hear the audible voice from heaven. You won't. But the Lord uses people for people as a witness. Anyone who shares the word of God to you is a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning if somebody comes to you and share the word, meaning the Lord is reaching out to you. Preachers, and I will explain to you more about this in a little bit. Now, today that you're watching this, this message, this is no accident, brothers and sisters. This day, this time, this is, a, this is a, a divine appointment by the Lord that you're watching this message right now, brothers and sisters. This is no accident. As far as God is concerned, there's no accident. It is a divine appointment by the Lord. Now, regarding this COVID-19, there are videos circulating, YouTube, Facebook, saying that the COVID-19 is a conspiracy theory. Now, they said they're, because some of them, they said they're trying to lessen the world's population or maybe to ruin uh, other countries' uh, economy. And they said this was planned 10 years ago. You know what, brothers and sisters, what, what, what can, let the Bible speak for, for, it, for itself. Now, but the Bible says, it is bound to happen, it will happen, and it is happening right now. Regardless, it shall come to pass because this is what the Bible says. Now, let me just give you an example. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 18, the Bible said, I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. Brothers and sisters, everything that is written in this book will come to pass. Will come to pass. Now, the second word is the gospel. Now, I don't know if you heard, what is the gospel, by the way? Now, and then you, maybe you heard, what is gospel or full gospel? Now, uh, full gospel, because most of the time we know when we say gospel is this book. It's true. But what is gospel? What is the full gospel? Now, the full gospel is Jesus died, Jesus was buried, and uh, Jesus rose from the dead. That is the full gospel. This, that, this is the full gospel of the Lord. Now, what is the significance of the death of Jesus to us? Now, what is the significance of Jesus' uh, burial to us? And what's the significance of God, Jesus' resurrection? Do you know, brothers and sisters, that you and I, just like Jesus, we have to die, we have to be buried, and we have to, we have to resurrect. Now, let me clear this up to you. I am not talking about literally. This is not literal. This is symbolic, brothers and sisters. Now, what does die means? Now, when Jesus died, somebody or something in us must die, which is what? Which is your old self. And again, I'm not, this is not literal. This is symbolic. Now, when Jesus died, something in us must die. What is this? Is your old self. Now, when you accept, if you will accept Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there should be what? The initial evidence is the transformation, meaning your old self is gone. Now, I will give you a, a, a verse on this one. And then the, the burial of Jesus and, and His resurrection, then the, the water baptism comes in here. Now, because the water baptism, when we submerge you totally in the water, that is the symbol that is like, it's the death of Jesus Christ. Like when we submerge you completely to the water, that's the symbol of the death, of your death. Now when you come out of the water, that's the symbol of what? Of you are resurrect from the dead. Now, let me give you a, a verse or a chapter in the Bible. Now the Bible said, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed. What is this, brothers and sisters? Your old self, your old life had passed. So meaning, before you accepted Jesus, if you love to curse, and when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, 
No, this is not instant. This is not overnight. You accepted the Lord today, and then tomorrow you're completely changed. No, it, it's a process, brothers and sisters, little by little. Now, if you love to curse before, now that you accepted Jesus Christ, little by little, it will go away. That's what I meant. That's what the Bible meant on this one. So he said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, when you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, now you are, this is your new life now. Your old life before is what? Past. And all these things have become new. Verse 18, Now all these things are of God who has reconciled us to Himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. What is this, brothers and sisters? Through the death of Jesus Christ. Why? Because of sin, there is now a separation between us and God. Because we are sinful and He's not. So there are what? What happens, there's a, a separation. But because of the death of Jesus Christ now, there is a reconciliation now between man and God. Why? Like I said, because of sin. Because the Bible said, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible said, For all. The Bible did not say few or some. The Bible said, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's no exemption here. All have sinned. Now, let's continue reading the, the, the book. Yet God, in His grace, freely makes us right in His sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when He freed us from the penalty of our sin. Why? Because He bore our sin. He died on the cross because of you and me. Now, brothers and sisters, for God from heaven come down here and manifested in the flesh and be nailed on the cross, died and buried and resurrected, brothers and sisters, just to show you that there is some urgency from the Lord why he did this. Verse 25, Then God, for God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin, and people are made right with God when they believe. Now look, this is his part. What is his part? It's when he died on the cross. Now if you notice, we have our part to perform. He said, people are made right with God when they, what? When they believe that Jesus Christ is life, shedding His blood. Now, I will explain to you this a little bit more. The sacrifice shows that God was being fair when He held back and did not punish those who sinned in time past. Now, remember, remember, God, God hates sin, not the sinner. He hates sin, but not the sinner. Now, the death of Jesus Christ, because of the death of Jesus Christ, we have hope now. God gave us hope because of His death to the cross and He was buried and He rose from the dead. He gave us what? He opens up the gate of salvation for us. That is His part. Because brothers and sisters, you cannot question God. Definitely, He will do His part. Why? Because the Bible said so. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's consistent. He never changed. Now, let me take you to Acts chapter 2. Now, the Bible said, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, this is Apostle Peter when he was preaching. And he was telling the, 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 the Jews. They said, if you remember, the, the man, the person that you sent to be nailed to the cross is Jesus who is the Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. They were, they were touched. They were convicted. And said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? So meaning, 
we have to do something as far as our salvation is, con is concerned. It's not everything about the Lord. There is a part that He left, a part that He left that we have to do something. We have our part and God has His part. It's because, brothers and sisters, I don't know if there's any relationship that will survive if there is only one party that is doing their part. As far as relationship is concerned, you have to show love and you have to receive. The other party should receive love and also receive. It is very important even to our relationship with God. Reciprocity is very important. It's very important. So they asked, and Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what should we do? They said, what do we have to do? Now the Bible said that Peter said to them, repent. Now when you, when you talk about repent, it, it has something to do with, of course, repentance and what? Accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, if you, if you notice, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to, I, I'm not saying anything about, about religion. Because to begin with, try to read your Bible even in the Old Testament during the time of Adam and Eve. God established his relationship with Adam and Eve. It's not religion, brothers and sisters, that can save you. It's your relationship with God. Refer even to the Old Testament, the beginning of time. It's not religion. It's a it's your relationship with God. Now, and then Peter said, said to them, repent. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's why part of your salvation is baptism. It is very important too. Now, maybe some of you will ask, what if the person is physically not able? Of course, then the grace of God will come in. But if you are physically able, then go, because it's part of your salvation. Remember the, the death? Remember the death of Jesus? The burial of Jesus and the resurrection, it goes. So if you ask me, you see when, 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 when the Jews asked Apostle Peter, and he said, repent and let every one of you be baptized. No, it's not me. It's the word of God. The Bible said, let every one of you be baptized. To whom? In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this is the true gospel, brothers and sisters. This is the, this is the, the, the true gospel. Now, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ gave us hope, like what I've said. Saving us from what? From eternal damnation. Because when we sin, without the shedding of the blood, we are destined to what? To eternal damnation because of our sins. We got it from our parents, Adam and Eve, the it's like the DNA. We, 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 we got it. Now, to save us from what? For eternal damnation. Second, what else? To save us from a great disaster that will happen here on this planet, in our life here. What we are experiencing right now is just the tip of the iceberg. The COVID-19, brothers and sisters, if you read your, your Bible, this is actually nothing. And yet, Right now, it's just, it's a virus. I'm not saying it's just a virus. No, it's a virus. But you see, it it changed our lifestyle now. It's it's different now. But let me just give you a silhouette of what's going to happen in the future. Now, in Joel chapter two, verse thirty and thirty-one, the Bible said, "I will show you show wonders in heaven and in and in the earth." Now look. Now this literal. This is literal. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Thirty-one. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of our Lord. Just giving you a glimpse. Now, you can read the whole chapter 24 because it's, it's a little bit long. So you can just read the whole chapter of Matthew chapter 24 and it will give you all the signs before the end or before the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, the Bible said, When we then, as workers together with Him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of the God in... I'm sorry. 
to plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Next verse. For he says, or he says, in an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Now, pay attention to this. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now, the Bible said, now is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, not next year, not in five years, not in a decade. But if you hear His voice, the Bible said, now is the day of your salvation. You see the urgency of the Lord, brothers and sisters? The urgency of the Lord. Today is your salvation. You know why? Because personally, that's my experience. Every time I share the word, especially, especially to, to my friends, and they'll say, oh, you know what, brother, it's too early for me. I'm still young. I guess when I'm old, then I will accept the Lord. I guess, maybe. Now, what does the Bible say about this? Now look. In Matthew chapter... Now, in James, I'm sorry. In James chapter 4, verse 13. Now let me, let me, let me show you some verses. You know why the Lord is giving us the warnings and not only that is the urgency when it comes to our salvation. Now the Bible said here, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city. Spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit. Sounds like a plan, right? Oh, they're like, hey dude, we're, we're going to the city, to this place. We will, you know, do business there, and then we'll make a profit. Sounds like a plan. And a lot of people are doing this, brothers and sisters. Next year, next month, I will go there, I will go there, and this what, what I'm going to do. I will uh, in, invest there, or maybe we will go there for a vacation. A lot of people are doing this. Come down you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city. Spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit. Verse 14. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. You do not know. Let's continue. For what is your life? Now the Lord is asking you right now. What is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Now what is this? Our life, the Bible says, is like a vapor. Today you're here. Tomorrow you're gone. I'm not being pessimistic, brothers and sisters. I'm just telling you the facts of life. And this is what the Bible says. You're strong today and then tomorrow what will happen? We don't know. Who among us here knows that you will reach 80? 80, 80? the age of 80, you're still here, or 85 or 75, we don't know. When you try to watch the news, a lot of people younger than me already died, younger than you, dead, not through sickness, accidents, we don't know. Because the Bible says our life is like a vapor. Today you're here, tomorrow you're gone. Now let's go back to Matthew chapter 24. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquake in various places. Now the Bible says this is just the beginning. We have not reached the apex. We're not. That's why I showed you it's like a, a, a mother giving birth to her child. There is an early stage and then there is the actual stage. Now, a similar account of Jesus' teachings is found in Luke chapter 21. If you have your Bible, you can open your book in the book of, uh, you, can, you can open up your Bible in the book of uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 10. Now, before that, let's, uh, let's read Matthew chapter 24, verse 7, the Amplified Version, before we go to Luke, I'm sorry. Now, but all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. This is what the Bible said. This is the early. Of the what? Intolerable anguish and the time of unprecedented trouble. So there is 
We just don't know when. It could be tomorrow, next week, next month, who knows. But the Lord is giving us all the signs ahead of time. Are we experiencing famine? Maybe not here, but in other countries. Pestilences. That's why we can't just... The government is telling us not to, to leave the house. Stay home. Why? Because of this pandemic that we're experiencing. Now, in, in, uh, in Luke chapter 21... Verse 10, the Bible said, Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation. This is a New King James Version. In kingdom against kingdom. And there will be great earthquake in various places, and famine and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights. Can you imagine? Try to visualize this, brothers and sisters. There will be a fearful sights and great signs from heaven. And all this are the beginning of sorrow. Now the scripture reads, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquake in diverse places. And this is biblical. And these are the beginning of sorrows. Now the passage is attributed to Jesus Christ who told his followers what to expect before his second coming. Now if you always remember this, if the Lord keeps on repeating himself, very important, God is emphasizing this to all of us. Jesus is telling us ahead of time so we know what, what is to come. Be prepared. Now let me ask you, are you ready when this comes? Now, I can't help but to compare it in the time of Noah. Well, let's go to Hebrew. Chapter 11. Faith led Noah to listen when God warned him about the things in the future. Now, during the time of Jesus and from the time of Noah, if I'm not mistaken, it is like two or three thousand years ago. Now, in Matthew chapter 24, God gave them the signs of what is going to happen before the second coming, before his second coming. Back in Noah's time, Jesus is what? Or God is what? War giving a warning to Noah. And he said, faith led to Noah to listen when God warned him about the things in the future that he could not see. What is this? God is giving Noah, he is warning Noah, telling him ahead of time that there will be a great... Now what is this? What is these things in the future that he could not see? Now let's continue reading. He obeyed God and built a ship to save his family. Through faith Noah condemned the world and received God's approval that comes through faith. Now in Living Bible, it says Noah was another who trusted God when he heard God's warning about the future. Noah believed him even though there was no sign of what? Flood. Flood. The thing that was mentioned in the other version is the flood. God is giving him the warning.